All right then, gang, so in this video, I want to create another cloud function that is gonna help us to add one to the upvotes every time a user clicks on an upvote arrow. Now, this is probably gonna be the most complex cloud function that we've done in this series so far, and that's because there's gonna be a fair amount of logic inside the cloud function. So first of all, we want to make sure that a user is authenticated because only people that are logged in should be able to do this. So that's the first step. Then we only want users to be able to upvote a particular tutorial once. So I can't just keep on spam upvoting it like that. I can only do it once on each tutorial, right? So every user has one vote for each tutorial. That makes sense. So we need to, first of all, check that a user has not voted on a specific tutorial before. And we're gonna do that by tracking what tutorials they've voted on inside this array right here, upvoted on. So for instance, if I was to upvote on this, then what it would do is it would take the ID of this document from the requests collection. If it was this right here, it would take this ID and it would add it to that user's upvoted on array. So if they then try to upvote it again, first of all, we're gonna check this property right here and make sure that that ID of that request is not inside this array. If it's not inside the array, we allow them to upvote and we increase the vote on that tutorial by one, but then what we do is we take the ID and we add it to the upvoted on array. So then, if they try to upvote the same one again, it comes over here, it checks the upvoted on array again, and it finds the ID of that request inside here. And at that point, we say, no, you're not allowed to upvote that particular document or that particular tutorial request again. I hope that makes sense. So because of all of that, there's quite a bit of logic to cover and it is gonna be a little bit more complex than the other one. So don't feel bad if you have to pause the video just to catch up and figure out what's going on. Okay then, so now we kind of know what we're doing. Let's start this. So inside index.js, our cloud functions file, first of all at the bottom, I'll do a little comment, upvote callable function. And then under that, we're gonna create a callable function and I'm gonna call this upvote. So export dot upvote and set it equal to functions dot https dot on call. And then inside here, we pass a callback function. That callback function takes a data object and also the context object. Okay, so the first step in here is to make sure that a user is authenticated. So let's do a little comment because there's gonna be a lot of code inside this function. Let's make sure it's all organized and we know what each bit is. So the first section is gonna to be to check the auth state. Now we've done that once before and it's up here. So we do a little if check and throw an error if they're not authenticated. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it down here because we don't need to rewrite things. There's no point in that. And that's the first step done. So the next step is to get references for the user document, whoever's tried to upvote this, and also for the request document, the thing they're trying to upvote. And remember, we need references to both of those because we need to check properties in both of those. We need the upvoted on property of the user to make sure they've not voted on this particular tutorial before. And we also need the actual document that they want to update the upvotes on. So we need references to both of these collections right now. So let's do a comment again and say get refs for user doc and request doc. Okay, so the first one is gonna be the user. So const user is gonna be equal to admin dot firestore dot collection. We want the users collection and we also want a specific document inside that so doc and we need to pass in the id of the user to get that document this thing right here now we get that on the context object and to get it we just say context dot auth dot uid so it takes the current user who is logged in and grabs the uid from that user so now we're passing that into the document method right here to grab a reference to that specific document and we're storing it right here. So now we can check data on that document later on. Okay, so the next reference we want is for the actual tutorial request document. So const request is equal to admin 
dot fire store again and then dot collection again this time we want the requests collection and the ID that we want is gonna this time come off the data property. So when we make this call later on, we're gonna attach an ID property to the data that we send to this function, and now we can grab it from the data over here. So dot doc to grab a specific document, data dot ID. So it's gonna look for the document with that specific ID. And remember, the ID will be passed to this function when we click on one of these arrows. If it was this one, we get the ID of this and send it to the function. And we can do that because remember, if we go to our public folder, JavaScript, and then to requests.js, we put the ID onto each object inside the requests array. So we have access to each ID, okay? So we'll send that along later on. All right, so that was the next step. So what's next? Well, we want to check that the user hasn't already upvoted on this particular tutorial. So we want to check this property over here, upvoted on. And we want to make sure that the ID of the particular tutorial they're trying to upvote isn't inside this array. So let us down here say return, because remember, we always have to return something inside these functions. And because we're going to start to do our asynchronous code, it's a good idea to start returning things. So user dot get. So we have a reference to this document. Now we're going out and we're getting it. And that's asynchronous. We attach the then method onto that to fire a callback, which takes the document that it retrieves and we can do something with it. And this is where we're going to check that the user hasn't already upvoted the request. OK, so let's spell this correctly, first of all hasn't and under here the way we're going to check this is by saying if doc which we have access to we get that document and we want the data from the document and we get that by saying data and invoking that method then we can access the up voted on property which is this thing over here so that's the array and then we want to check if that includes a specific element so we can say includes and then we want the data ID. Remember, this is the ID of the document, the request that we're trying to upvote. So we're seeing if this array right here includes a string, which is this ID. Now, if they've never upvoted this before, it's not going to include that. But if they have upvoted this before, it is going to include that. And therefore, we want to throw an error. So I'm going to just grab this right here where we threw an error up at the top, and I'm going to paste it over here. I'll change this code from unauthenticated to something else and let's delete that. So I'll change it to if we scroll through these failed precondition because they have this inside their upvoted on array and that's kind of a precondition, right? And what I'll do is remove this and I'll say you can only upvote something once. Okay, so now we're throwing an error if it's already in that array because they can't upvote it again. So now after that if check, if that's not the case, it's gonna move on, right? And at this point, we want to update the array in the user document. So update user array, because now we want to add this ID to this array because they've not upvoted it before, so it moves beyond this, but now they are upvoting it, so I'm gonna add that ID to the array. So if they try to do it again, this will fail and it will throw the error. So let's do that by saying return, and it's going to be the user, which we grabbed, and we want to update that this time, so not get, but update, and we wanna update the upvoted on property, and now that's gonna be an array. We want to take the current upvoted property. So we use the spread operator. We say doc, which we have access to. Remember, we got the doc right here. And then we wanna say dot data to spread out the data properties, but we only want the upvoted on array elements. So it's gonna grab the current upvoted on elements and spread those right inside this new array. And then we also want to add the data dot id so the id of the new request that we're adding to this array okay so that's all we need to update and again this is asynchronous so we tack on a dot then method and inside here we 
fire a callback function, which is gonna fire when this is complete. And at this point, once we've added it to this array, then we want to actually update the votes on the request. So we wanna to go to the actual request now, and we wanna increase that by one. So over here, we can say update votes on the request, like so. And then under there, we want to return the request itself, which is this reference right here. We got a reference to that document and we want to update that again. So dot update. And the thing we want to update is the upvotes. That was the property name over here. If we take a look, upvotes, we want to add one to that. So how do we increment that by one inside Firebase functions? Well, we can do that by saying admin dot firestore dot field value dot increment and then by how many one so what this does is take the current value of updates and increment it by one okay so that's pretty much all we need to do so let's just run through this one more time because i know there was quite a lot there we've set up the callable function and we take in data which has an id property attached to it that id represents the id of the request we want to update we also have the context object with information about authentication first of all we check the authentication state if they're not logged in then we throw an error and we send that back to the user and it doesn't carry on now if they are logged in then we grab references to the user document who is logged in and also the request document that they want to update then we get the user and the document and we check that that upvoted on property for that user doesn't include this ID of the request that they want to update or upvote rather. Now, if it already includes that, then it throws this error where it says you can only upvote something once. If it doesn't include that, it's gonna move on. And at that point, then we take that user object and we update it. And we update this upvoted on property to add this ID of the tutorial request they're upvoting to the array. So we're constantly tracking what things they've upvoted. And we're also taking the current items in the upvoted on array and spreading those out as well so we don't lose them. So once it's done this and it's added that ID, then what we can do is we can return this thing right here, which is the update to the request documents. And we update the upvotes property by incrementing it by one. So I hope that all makes sense. It didn't to me, but let's just try it anyway. But we can't try it yet because we need to call it because it's an on-call function and we'll call it in the next video. But what we can do is deploy it. So let me come down here and I'm gonna say Firebase deploy only functions. Okay, so let's make sure that has been deployed by going to functions. And we can see this one right now, request upvote. So now we have that deployed. In the next video, what we'll do is set up the front end so we can call this function and try everything out.